Okay, if you guys are ready, we'll get started again. Our next speaker is Jamie Graff. She's the clinical coordinator in the emergency department here at JW. She's also a mother of five children, which I gotta say sort of gives a whole new meaning to single or working mother. It's like, you know, I have one and that's like working mother. Five is like, oh my god. You know, so um, I can't wait to hear how she's going to she's gonna give us some insight on a better work-life balance with your family and your work situation. Come on. I tend to walk around a little bit when I talk, but, well, thank you. I appreciate it. This is probably the easiest lecture I'll ever have to give because who won't sit and talk about their kids for a while? So this will be your quick photo album of my family. Um, a little about me, I started in emergency medicine 22 years ago. 14 years of that has been in the ER as a nurse. So, sorry, having palpitations about talking about my kids. <laughs> Maybe it's getting me stressed about going home. <laughs> But, you know, there's a very fine line between being an emergency room nurse and being a mom. And I really only have two talents. One is an ER nurse, one is a mom. So this is kind of how I have to get my own balance, because with five kids, people usually ask us, are you Mormon? No. <laughs> are you Catholic? No. But as my husband usually says, they've invited us. <laughs> so, so please, I'll try not to bore you, but there are some things that we do to try to be creative to save ourselves a lot of headaches. So I can take a lot of the credit, but my wingman is my man. So <laughs> these are my twins that are now, um, they'll be three in July. They were born here. That's Xander and Maddox. And that's my husband, Gunnar. He's the not-so-fat German that does not wear a speedo. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a brief synopsis of how my day starts. So a lot of times my friends who know me and I talk about how to do this with my child or this with my child, they're like, oh my gosh, how do you do it? This is how I do it. So four in the morning I get up, sleeping in is 4.30, I like those days. Um, 4.10, start the coffee, it's all about prioritizing. Start a load of laundry, pack some lunches, watch the weather and check emails, I need to know what I'm going to put my kids in for the day. Uh, start laying out my own clothes put the load in the laundry, because now it's been about that 48 minutes for a light cycle, 58 minutes, I've got it all time. <laughs> uh, take the dog outside, by, by 5.45 I'm getting three kids up, three and five. By 6.20 I've got three kids fed, three kids watered, three kids dressed, the dog is fed, three arguments over shoes. <laughs> Now that they're potty trained, there's an argument over which underwear I'm wearing. Um, three sets of teeth brush and three on the way to daycare with dad. By 6.30, it's a little more coffee. By this time, I've probably reheated my coffee three times. But um, checking some more emails. 7 o'clock, I wake two of the kids up to get ready for school. I go for my run, I shower, two kids from the bus stop, and then come to work. So you see, this is a long day before I get to work. So if I'm not as friendly first thing in the morning, I apologize. <laughs> I probably didn't get to, to drink my coffee. So this is something I try to always remember. I have so much chaos in my life, it becomes normal. You become used to it. You just have to relax, calm down, take a deep breath, and try to see how you can make things work rather than complain about how they're wrong. And isn't that true in our own jobs here at the hospital? Yeah. A lot of times you see people complaining about this, complaining about this, instead of going, well, what can I do to fix it, or how can I change or work around it? Sometimes this is not why. Also, um, of course, this is not before work or at work, but sometimes at home. <laughs> so we're not unlike any family, although I have to say our chaos is really very controlled. My kids are fairly good. Um, they still have, I mean, you've seen them at, uh, at uh, Costco, and uh, they're fairly well behaved. Um, Wait, but we have they the like same. To talk strength? They do like <laughs> to talk strength. They're very social. They're very social. Um, but we have the same problems that everyone has when they come home from work. No one wants to eat their, their dinner at the table. They want to watch TV or walk around with it. They don't want to eat the broccoli. They only want fruit juice and dessert, right? But what we do are things like one night, I got home before all the other kids, and I said, let's have a family candlelight dinner. So I turned all the lights off, closed all the blinds, shut all the curtains, and I lit candles everywhere. <coughs> 
so that they had, of course, the two-year-olds right there. you got to keep them away from them. Um, but we, the whole dining room was set up with candles, so they couldn't really see what they were eating. <laughs> but they were very excited, and they were distracted. And they ate all the meal. And if you see, they're all sitting. They all are participating in their food. Snack time, it's when they're waking up from nap. It's sometimes hard to get them one to want to eat something that's good. So this was actually an Easter weekend. And they have fruit, cheese, and crackers here. But I just took a deviled egg display and put jelly beans in each hole. So as they ate something that was good for them, grab a jelly bean. Grab a jelly bean. So then they were fighting over getting the color that they wanted. So they were quick to eat what they were supposed to eat first. <laughs> so they could grab that pink one or that blue one. And it's very simple. As you can see, they're drinking out of champagne flutes. <laughs> it's water. But for them, it's a fancy glass. So they like to, uh, to drink out of this. Answer and eat is a game we play a lot of times at dinner time when there's something we know we had to cook because it was left over and it needed to be cooked, but they don't want it. So, but we persuade them by saying, playing a game where um, you say, you quiz them, where did mommy and daddy meet? So you give the one child, if they can't answer it, they got to eat. They got to take a bite. <laughs> but if they answer it, then they don't have to take that bite. What is mommy's favorite color? Of course, anything with underwear or bodily function is funny. So if you ask what color of underwear is daddy or mommy wearing, and you give it to the child, and they answer it, and you go, no, nope, they take a bite. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's eating. And this goes on until about everyone's done with their food. What was the name of daddy's first girlfriend? That couldn't be possible, right? They always like to go, oh, daddy never had a girlfriend. <laughs> we also do Lucky Trey. This is Adeline, or as we call her, Addie. She's five. And sometimes when they don't know it, I'll buy lottery tickets, put it at the bottom of their plates, and tell them, eat all your dinner, you get a surprise. And at the end of the dinner, they can flip their tray and they have a lottery ticket. So we sit at the table together, and you can't have it until you've eaten a good portion of your meal. We don't expect them to eat it all, because we don't want to teach them to overeat, but they eat a good portion of it, they get their lottery ticket, and then we split them any winnings as a family and go do something like a movie or buy something that we want for the house or something like that. The most we want is 100 bucks so far. So for our family, that got us bread. <laughs> <laughs> so the mom, I'm bored, it's a rainy day. This happens to me all the time, especially this winter when yeah. it was freezing cold. And I wanted to kick them outside, but I don't do cold weather, so that wasn't going to happen. Um, we do a lot of the forts. And as you see, there's Peyton, Xander, and Addie hiding under there. Um, and then we all, if we've had kids, then we have a playroom full of toys. But for some reason, they don't want those toys. They've seen them a thousand times. Well, I'll have them line up all their favorite toys on the dining room table, and then I take yarn. This is a toilet paper roll holder. There's bells and pipe cleaners and solo cups, and we make a city connecting all of them. Yeah. So then they all sit in their seats, and like the toilet paper roll, they put the little figurines on that and slide it to the other part of the city. And so for them creating this, it's like using their toys with other scraps that I have in the house, and they play with this for hours. Oh. Ah. One thing we do is if it's raining or cold, I let them go swimming. It's just going to be in the bathtub. So then we go grab their goggles, we grab a snorkel, we grab uh, glow sticks and turn the light off and put them in the bathtub and let them play and swim. It's not hurting anything. They're perfectly contained. I can even sneak some TV in while I'm watching them in the tub. But we give them ladles and spatulas and all kinds of things. And sometimes I'll ask mom, can we have you know, a swim in the bathtub? And no problem. Um, this is hit or miss with some people. <laughs> When I was growing up, uh, this would definitely not be allowed. Um, but we've set limits, and we will sometimes let them jump on our bed, or we take the mattress off and put it on the floor, or we have an old spare air mattress that we use for camping, and we'll put that on the floor and just let them jump. A lot of times they need just to exert their energy, um, especially my youngest twin who has a sensory processing disorder. He needs some physical stimulus to actually calm down. So this is a perfect way for them to do that. And we like kids be kids. This is not a timeout, crazy. This is for the dog, but this is Mad Maddox. And he, uh, he likes to get in there and pretend he's the puppy a lot. So mom, I'm bored. It's a sunny day. Uh, I don't care about dirt. I don't care if they're filthy. I don't care if they're sweaty. I encourage, I grew up on 300 acres. 
Um, we do not have that that we live on, but I encourage them to get in the dirt and play. And one of the best shovels you can give a child is a spoon. You give them a regular dining room spoon and let them dig and tell them they can find things. Uh, my birthday present this year was something I've been asking for for years, is for a metal detector. And we go around our yard with our metal detector or go to my parents' house and we do metal detecting and they, for the longest time, they think they're going to find the treasure. So yeah. far it's just some tops and some uh, canning and one plow piece. So We encourage them to make some of their own toys. So this is Peyton. She's uh, nine. She made her own walkie-talkie and her own helmet for outer space travel and her own map for outer space. And I love how she put my team, and she listed everybody on her family. And she plays with that for a long time outside. A lot of um, my husband, my wingman there, Gunnar, he's very creative, and he's a, a home builder. So he knows how to work a lot of tools and a lot of neat stuff. Um, so he went out and bought $100 worth of cable and had a pulley. And we took one of the uh, accessories to our swing, and he put a zip line, 175 foot zip line, in the back of the house. It doesn't have to be that big, but for us, he was like, let's just make it as big as we can. And the kids, and as you can see, this is Chopper. This is our dog, Chopper. He loves it because if he's behind this one, there's a rope that hangs down, and he can last a little bit of it, grab it, and swing the rest of the way. So, Riding in the car, uh, that's always an adventure, but I, I really do relate it a lot to like we do in nursing when you're talking about scripting your care. It's a lot of scripting your parenting. You know, if I start with, we have a long trip, I'm going to get you some things to do, and then if you help me, we're going to have fun. So sometimes we play the game, I got it, and who doesn't like to beat their parents? So it's kids against mom or kids against dad, and if I see something ahead of me like a pink car, the rule is if they work together and find it together and call it out and say, I got it, they get the point. If we drive past it, mama gets the point. So nobody wins it, but they love it to hear all of them say, I got it, at the same time. It's a lot of fun. Um, they each have a sound that they make each time they get in the car and put their seatbelt on. Um, when I flew in an aircraft full time, every time you were secured in your seatbelt, you say, you know, secure in the back, clear in the back. Well, they will make a sound, so they'll be hearing, putting seatbelts on, and I'll hear, boom. <laughs> or black, 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 black. And once I've heard everybody, I know they've all had their seatbelts on. I take a quick peek and they're done. There's no fighting. There's no arguing. Everyone climbs in their seat and does their thing. We're going long trips. Last year we drove down to Florida to Orlando. We stopped on the way down halfway. On the way home, though, we drove 14 hours straight. We had not one fuss, not one cry, not one complaint, not one I'm tired or how much longer at all. And it's all about pre-planning. We gave little toys, either dollar store stuff or stuff they hadn't seen in a while, in little bags or a box. And every hour and a half, you opened up something new and you played it together. And there was never, um, never arguments because it just was nothing to argue about. Um, there's a website I have on the end that's Map My Play. If you do go on long travels where you can put where you are or GPS it, it'll give you parks in that area where you are if you want it to stop and go in there. So I think a big part of um, our parenting style is we reward our child throughout the year, not just for big things, but also for good behavior and good moral conduct. One way we do that is last year I gave them a treasure hunt at the end of the school year. So good grades, good attitudes, they got a treasure hunt. They had clues on index cards all around the house. Uh, one person was assigned to be the reader, which was Hayden. Um, Peyton was the navigator, and she tried to help figure out what the clue meant. And Addie was the digger, because that was really the skill she could do at the time. But the rules were simple. You had to communicate to each other. You had to work together. No one was left behind, and everyone played nicely. And when they did that, by the time they finished, they were all over the house. They were running, they were screaming, and they found out of the yard some blue painter's marking tape underneath some hay. And they actually got to dig in the ground with a shovel, and find the Ziploc bag that had each one of them had like a new little DS game or a little CD game. And they were just thrilled. And they already asked for it again this year. <laughs> but we'll see when those report cards come out. This is something I do with my girlfriend Brandy before Hayden started kindergarten. He's 11 now. Um, and HDARewards.com actually has discounts for rental cars and things like that. But we rented a convertible for the day and we split it as part of their last day before having to start their real life of kindergarten. 
And we drove them around with a, in a convertible with the top off with the radio, playing whatever music they wanted. We took them to the pony pastures, took them out to eat and have ice cream. And I'll tell you, they loved it. I mean, they've never been in a convertible. It was not expensive by the time we split it between the two of us. And it, it was just, we have some great pictures of them just goofing off and singing together. Um, I, I, again, I believe a lot in nature and what nature has to offer for the kids to play in. So just finding a creek, this is one of our camping trips and putting them in rain boots, and they'll do the rest for you. They could have spent hours just throwing rocks in the water. Knowing your heroes, I'm a huge supporter of our EMS agencies and locally here. I was an EMS provider for years. Um, and these guys at Chesterfield are awesome about allowing you to bring your kids down and see the ambulance. And if you go to um, uh, Station 15, down by the airport, this was a, a trip when I was flying out of that uh, station. I arranged for the daycare to come down and meet the firefighters. They have fire poles. They have the big airport um, response vehicle. They have a fire truck. They have an ambulance. And, and they're just good to the kids. They show them stop, drop, and roll. They just watch them come down the fire pole. They gave them all fire hats. And, and they're really, really, and Lindley, they, her husband's one of them. They're a really good group of guys that are really good with kids. Med flights across the street. This is my old aircraft. This isn't med flight, but they get to kind of look at airplanes coming in and look at the helicopter lifting off. And I think it's important for them sometimes to be involved with what you have to do as a job too. So I try not to complain about my job when I go home, so that they realize that it, it's got to be done. Uh, one thing we do is when we're outside playing, if we don't know what to do for dinner, we order pizza and we tell them we're going to tell them to bring it to the backyard. And we just sit out there, and the kids find it absolutely amazing. Well, we moved from Powhatan, there was really no delivery for us. We moved here, and they're like, we can see a delivery guy. And he rang the doorbell. They all rang. They're like, are you a pizza delivery guy? <laughs> He's like, yeah. And, uh, but it was their first time, and so we have pizza delivered to the backyard all the time. And even at hcarewards.com, a lot of people don't realize you get 25% off your Papa John's. And, you know, who doesn't like a garlic kitchen sauce? Uh, this is Addie again. Uh, double dessert is something we started doing a few years ago, um, rewarding good behavior. When my son Hayden actually stuck up for Peyton when some kids were picking on her at school, and he spoke up and said, you're not picking on my sister like that. And he didn't tell me, but Peyton came home and told me what happened. So they get, if they do something that's morally just out of their ordinary, they get double dessert. And so they'll usually say, does, does Addie get double dessert for that? And I'm like, I don't know, let's see. But, but that's something that they get real-time rewards for. And part of having the, the five kids has allowed me to kind of become a mom figure in the ER as well. So a lot of the moms that are newer to being moms will come to me and ask me about things. And there's one girl down there is having a hard time with one of her kids and trying to find ways to get her motivated at the end of the school year. And one thing I've done when that's become a problem is you keep telling them, do this and I'll reward you with this. Well, they don't see that. They can't see that far ahead. So I say, go get something that you're going to reward them with. And then put it on the refrigerator. They can't touch it. They can't get it. But every day, they see their goal. Every single day, they're reminded of what their behavior needs to be. And as they do that, they, can, they have something a little more tangible that they can address their behavior for. Uh, we also do Kid of the Week, so with five it's a little easier, um, but it's not always the same kid. And every Saturday they will ask to see my phone to see whose picture is on the front of my phone on the, on the cover. And whoever's had the best behavior, the best attitude, eat the best meals, gone to bed without a fuss, offered to help others, becomes Kid of the Week. And you get to pick your dinner, um, and everyone else has to eat it, and you do get your double dessert. And Maddox, um, for two weeks in a row because we've worked on him and his sensory problems has been kid of the week. Uh, we take him on a train, so there's lots of places in, in Wilkin, Elkins, West Virginia in that area where you can actually stay in a caboose overnight. They just drop you off on the caboose along the riverbed. You can stay overnight and camp. Um, there's cabins. There's all kinds of great things to do and they really enjoy it. You just go in the fall when you can see all the color changes. It's, it's very nice. We give them a lot of random toys, so nothing like Daddy's workshop to get a, a hammer and take it outside and beat on rocks. So, and they usually fight over it. We actually, this is a brand new one because we had to go get one just like the other one to give the other twin. Uh, for sixty bucks, I got a, a um, waterproof case to put on the point and shoot I already had. 
So I give it to them. It's sandproof, it's shockproof, and it's waterproof. And they take it everywhere with them, and they love getting shots of each other underwater. And I don't have to worry about my camera, and I didn't have to buy a new camera. So it's relatively inexpensive. Again, they make some of their own toys. So Kate made her own cell phone so she could text me on her camping trip. <laughs> we just took some chalk and then she just went around and made a, I think she had a tablet, a computer, a cell phone. Um, when Hayden played uh, football last year, it was a challenge because a lot of the games and practices, you have to drag along two twins that really don't want any part of watching some people in orange and blue on the field. So we would bring different things for them to, to get entertained. And, um, sometimes the nights got cool, so we'd bring a blanket. Well, I'd always bring two flashlights. And you put two twins and a flashlight under a blanket, and it is just nonstop giggling. <laughs> it is giggling, 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 and everyone else around them is giggling because they're having so much fun. I know where they are. I can obviously count one, two, two heads in there. <laughs> so it, it, it's a lot of fun, and it's very cheap and easy to do. We do a lot of hiking trips, uh, Crabtree Falls, a lot of these. Um, trails are rated to tell you how difficult and how far and the stopping point, so it's really good you can use with kids. These are some of the um, websites that we've used in the past. Um, Pinterest, obviously, I think everybody knows about Pinterest now, but there's some great ideas on there. Lego.com, if you have kids that like Legos, you can put the, the age, your name of your child, and the gender, and they will send free magazines to your house for that child. So, of course, each one of my kids is registered, so they each get their own individual mail. And it's a nice color Lego magazine with cartoons and pictures, and, and they love it. It, it. I mean, they look for their Lego mail. Just some things that we try to um, remind other people, because we do become a resource for some people sometimes. Um, list work. I make lots of lists. My packing list is on an Excel file. There's a warm weather. There's a cold weather one. And all they have to do is give it to the kid and they put whatever's in the list in their bag. Um, checklists are awesome. Small things are just small things. So if they get dirty, they break something, they spill something, it doesn't matter. I don't make it a big deal. Um, there's plenty of time you would like to clean, but only a short period of time with your kids. So our kids have a chore list. And on that chore list, there's prices by each chore. So if they're saving money for something, then we can sit down, we look at the chore list together and go, well, you need at least $5. So this chore is worth $2, this chore is worth 3 So if you want to do these two things, then you can get the money. But they have a little control in their own uh, chores and their own duties. Uh, time yourself. Just like we tell our patients and each other, give me 20 minutes and I'll be back. Do that with your children. Mommy needs one hour to finish this and then I'm coming to you. Make yourself accountable and do that because one hour to them is going to seem like an attorney. So if they, when the clock says one three zero, mommy's coming to you next, and they'll and they'll appreciate you following. Through. <coughs> happy parents produce happy children, so it is contagious. Work is a priority, but family is the priority. So learning to prioritize your own self will help you a lot. Um, kids can help with those household household duties, and they they have to are. Our three oldest kids have to do their own laundry. Uh, we don't do it for them, so they have to do their own. Uh, we do the chore list with pricing and the tangible item that we talked about. But that's it. That's so cute. Any questions for Jamie? How many more? <laughs> I want it one more, but my husband told me it would be with a different father. <laughs>